Hello YouTubes. This is an Atherne Blue Box, Norfolk Southern, GP38, possibly a Dash 2. One of the first locals I got when I first started the hobby back in April last year. It's a great running loco. Does have some uh, cracked gears that I need to fix. But today, finally, I'm going to upgrade it to DCC and it's going to be very, very simple. <laughs> oh, goodness. Now, if you keep these in DC format, they're actually really easy to work on. They also have really easy removable shells. However, over time, they get really loose. So for the older blue boxes, don't be lifting them up by this section here because they could just fall off and then your local falls on the floor. Now, what's this you are probably asking? Well, obviously, I've already been in here and I installed some LEDs. This was before I even considered the whole DCC thing. And as you can see, these wires are way too chunky. So I will probably chop the wires down, get rid of all this bulk, because when we add the DCC decoder chip, we're going to have even less room. I might keep the wires that are already installed along there, keep the bulbs, because I know they work. They have resistors in them, but let's see, where is the resistor? Is it up at the... Yeah, the resistors for these LEDs are up at the bulbs, so I can chop these here and just add some much finer wire. So that is pretty much good to go for that part of the install. As for the rest, I need to get rid of all this wiring. First, let me explain to you the decoder chip I'm going to be using and roughly how it gets installed. Let me move this out of the way for now. So this is a Digitrex DH126. It's a very basic decoder. It controls forward, reverse, direction, speed, and all those settings to make it accelerate and slow down nicely. And it also does front and rear lights. That's about it, which is fine if you're just wanting a basic install. So that is the decoder itself. Now they come with a variety of wiring harnesses. This is actually one that was sent to me from Greg Dean, who sent me a pack of accessories for digital decoding. And I'm going to be using this one because I'm not going to be able to mount this directly on a, a circuit board. There's just not enough room. Once you get the shell on top of this particular model, there's no room. So hopefully I can just mount my decoder up there, keep it away from the flywheels. And the wires will go wherever they're supposed to go. So let me explain how the wiring works again relatively quickly. I know if this is your first decoder install, it can be quite um, intimidating with all these wires, but it's actually pretty simple. What we're actually doing with a decoder install is we're intercepting the power coming from the rails to the motor. So instead of the power going straight from the rails to the motor, the power goes into the decoder first and then the power signal from the decoder goes to the motor that way. So we have a red wire and a black wire. The red and the black pick up the power from the rails. Okay, that's those two out of the way. Then it goes into the decoder. This will obviously clip into this little connector there. Once the decoder's done its magic, it then sends that power signal to the motor through the orange and the grey wire. Okay, so that's two power signals coming in and two going out. So that's four wires we've used so far. Remaining wires. We don't use the green for this particular install because this is a generic harness. We don't use the brown, so forget about them. I'll probably chop them short. That leaves us three wires left and these are for your lights. The blue wire is the common positive. The white wire goes to the front headlight negative and the yellow wire goes to the rear light negative. So the positives from both the front and rear lights goes to this blue wire and that's all our wires. It's actually that simple. The hard part is with the Arthur and Blue Box, 
the negative signal for the motor is actually picked up from the bottom of the motor into the frame, so we need to isolate that. Before I get to that stage though, I do need to get rid of all this chunky wiring, strip it down. I also need to replace my axle gears. I've got some off AliExpress. I'm not going to leave a link because these are not perfect. They're actually white. The diameter and the holes in the middle of these axle gears are different sizes, so I can't recommend them. I'm going to have to super glue them in until I get the right thing. So I will take care of stripping this down, cleaning it, and then we'll actually start the install. So we'll see you in a minute or two. And we're back. Now, I have actually stripped this down, cleaned it all up, replaced the gears. Every single one of these axle gears was cracked and not gripping the wheels. I'm amazed it even made it around the track. Still a great runner despite that. So I've replaced it with these little red ones instead. Uh, I was actually mistaken. They do actually work okay, so maybe I will just leave a link. Anyway, I thought I'd put it back together again to show you right from the start what this looks like. The only thing missing from this at the moment is this section here, which would normally attach round about there. And that gets its connection. That would be the negative for the bulb. The positive for the bulb is this bit at the back, which makes contact with this. Also, I've reattached this power bar, which connects the front and rear trucks for this side of the rail. That side of the rail is the chassis up to the motor. So we can move that. We're not using that one anymore. And we can disassemble. Now, the only reason I'm taking the trucks off is just to make it easier to get the motor out. It's really easy. Put a screwdriver up this little gap here. There's a clip there. Pop that up. Same on the other side if you like. Up through this gap here. Keep your finger over the top of that clip. It likes to ping off. Remove that. Remove your worm gear and the little drive shaft extension. And your front truck will drop down. Okay. While well, you're at it, clean this, this section here. Because in order to get the power from the rails, it comes up through the wheels, touches those brass bearings, if you like. Goes up this section here. And then from there, it touches the underside there of the frame. I think I might have over-oiled this the last time I <laughs> serviced it. Okay, so power rails, this section here, through that middle section there, pivots on that section there. So that all needs to be clean. Let me remove the back side. Okay, that's our trucks removed, put them to the side for now. It is important to remember which way around these were. This is the front. These are the positive pickups on the right hand side. Okay, so I'm going to try and remember to keep these the right way around. This is the front facing that way. Okay, now we can remove the motor. On the underside, you'll see in the Atherton blue box, these four little creamy coloured circles. There are actually two motor mounts. That one and that one's connected and that one and that one's connected. You really want to push these through with maybe a Phillips screwdriver. I would prefer to have like a a helix, not helix, a, a sort of Allen tool shaped thing rather than poking a hole in the bottom because these can break, especially if they're old. I have squirted some oil down there just to hopefully make it a bit easier to push these out. Sometimes you can wobble this out and I'm noticing even before I start, do you see that crack there? My motor mounts are knackered, but I'm not just going to rip this out. Let's pretend my motor mounts are fine. Thankfully, I have a 3D printer and I've made a couple of my own replacement mounts. So just be careful if you want to reuse your, your motor mounts. So we're going to try and push these through. Oh, these are rock solid. These should be kind of flexible, you know, sort of rubbery things. Oh, it's just, look at it, it's falling apart. So just as well, I've got new motor mounts to put in. 
Oh, these are solid. Yeah, brittle. Shouldn't be brittle. I mean, the whole point of these motor mounts is to take the vibration away. Now, these are just basic PLA filament printed mounts. You can buy the proper ones on eBay or whatever. They're not expensive, but I figured what's the point. I'll just try and make my own. All right, now I need to get rid of these. Ugh. Crunchy. Yeah, they shouldn't be. They shouldn't be that fully aparty. Hopefully, these are the same. Yeah, they look okay. Let me just have a wee test fit before I go any further, because I might have to reprint these, and they take a while for me to to print out. That's going to go in there. And as I say, there's two of these, and oh my goodness, so much shrapnel. Sorry, my chair is very squeaky today. Maybe use some of that oil in it. Right, so that, you see those two grooves there? They pop in there. Yeah, that looks like it's going to work. And that one will pop in there. And then those four holes go into the four holes we've just removed it from. <laughs> However, we're not ready for that yet. Why did I take the motor out? Well, you see these little, these little copper strips there? I kind of spring loaded pointing towards me and they force themselves onto that silvery strip there which we are not using but i'm still going to clean it because you know why not we need to prevent those little tangs from making contact to the chassis because we need to isolate this there's two ways of doing this you can snip them off those little things or you can swap this bar with the top bar I think on this occasion, I think I'm just going to snip these off, but we still have to make sure that this strip here does not come on into contact with the frame. So we'll put a bit of tape along the bottom there just to prevent that. First though, I'm going to remove this little bar, cut off those things, put it back on again. We also need to solder on a wire because instead of getting the power from these little tangs, it's going to be getting the power from the decoder, which is going to sit way up the top. So let me get this off, snip them. While it's off, I'll solder on a little bit of wire. Now, when you remove this, you got to remember that underneath this strip here is a spring and your brush for your commutator. Okay, so keep your finger above that. Unclip there, remove that. It kind of hooks in at this side, so it took in there, clip down that way to put it back on. Let's see, do we need to remove this for now? No, not really. Just make sure you don't lose your spring and brush. So, as I say, I am going to just snip this. Maybe bend it up first. Because we really don't want this poking down onto the frame. Nice and neat. Same on the other side. Okay. Make sure they're not poking up. Next step then, I want to solder on a little bit of wire. Now what colour of wire and why is that important? Well, this is going to be getting the power signal from the decoder. And we've already established the two colours we need from the decoder are grey and orange. So I'm going to make the bottom one grey. Let me find a bit of grey wire and get this soldered on. Obviously we need to give this a little bit of a clean, make sure we get nice contact. Because once this is soldered, we're not going to have access to it. We can have, we'll have access to everything else, but not this bit. In fact, I think what we'll do is put it right at the edge there. Because we want this to this section here to be as flat as possible. So I think in there is where we want to wire our, or solder a little wire, okay? Let's move our motor out of the way for now. Oh. Nearly lost the spring, careful of that. 
and we will get our little wire on our little strip here. Bit of flux in there. Clean our soldering iron. I can't stress how important it is to always have your soldering iron nice and clean. Saves a world of trouble. So first we'll put a bit of flux just in there. This needs to be warmer. Basically the bigger bit of metal that you're soldering to, the hotter it's needing to be. Just ask anyone who's ever tried to weld aluminum. That's all you need. Like so. We'll get a bit of grey wire. So this gauge of wire is the same as the decoder wire. Not too small, not too thick. Need to strip it back a wee bit. Get that tinned up first. Okay, need to decide which way around we're going to put the wire. So if that is the bottom facing forward that way, I think I want the wire coming up. It doesn't really matter. I think I want it coming up this side, so over that way then. Of course that's the most awkward way to solder it. I need to do it kind of backhand with my <laughs> suddenly very shaky hand. That's our first connection made. So that is ready to go back in the motor. Might as well do that now. Get our pesky little spring back in. And remember what I said, this clips over this side first. It's going to be impossible to get it on the other way around. If you see that side there, it's got a sort of S clip. This has got a hook, so that hook's over there first. And then it just pushes down, clips in place. Okay. So as I said, that's the front. This is going to come up this way, this side of the motor, and into the decoder, wherever that ends up being. So while we're in that part of the installation, let's just make sure that we're not going to get a contact down there. Very unlikely because that is actually recessed, but I'm just going to put a little bit of insulating tape across that. I'm going to give this a right good clean first because it's a wee bit oily and tape does not like to stick to oily metal, as you can imagine. Okay. Let's get a bit of tape. Just cut this to shape. Just a very small strip. Let's go with that by that. That should be fine. You can't just use the whole width because then it would cover up your installation holes. You see that? Still a wee bit long. Just like so. So, no danger of the motor making any sort of connection from that bar down to there. Okay. So he can go back in. Well, it's that way around, but uh, obviously we have to see if these little motor mounts are going to work. Let's give it a shot. One in that side. One in this side. Oh, 
still bits of junk in there. <laughs> Old motor mount material. And we can just push this into place. Is that the right way around? Keep getting this wrong. No, nope. that way around. And that should pop into place with a bit of force. Oh, that's nice, actually. That worked too better than I thought. Oh, that side's not in yet. Oh, it has to go down all at once. Line up the mounts. You do want this a nice tight fit, to be fair. Oh, excellent. Oh, that's, that's the first time I've actually used these mounts. Really nice fit. Cool. Okay, that's the tricky part done. We've got a little wire coming up. So that's going to go into the decoder. We can actually put everything back on, get the trucks back on, get the drive shafts back on. The next part is just going to be wiring, wiring and a bit of soldering. Let me clean up a bit. That's better. Okay, let's get our trucks back in. Pops up there, locates in that hole I was talking about before. Drive shaft back in. Just lost my little brass washer, the brass bearing. Make sure you've not lost your little thrust washer that goes on there. Pop that back in. Like so, clip over the top. Front side is back on. Let's get the rear back in. Put that through there. Locates on its pin, pivot pin, let's call it. Rear drive shaft back in. And worm gear back in. Clip back on. Excellent. Getting on like a house on fire. Okay, let's figure out this wiring for this decoder. So, we have right track, right track, positive. And for the left track, we're going to take the feed from this. This, as I said before, was the negative power coming for the bulb. But we can use that because that's attached to the chassis, right? We can use that to go to the other side of the decoder, the basically the the black, okay, the black wire for there, red wire for these two. So we need to connect these two to make sure we've got pickup from front and rear truck, right side. Left rail gets its power feed from going through the chassis and both of them go through this. So this gets a wee bit complicated because we need to connect those two and then run a wire all the way from here. Oh, let's just go on with it, shall we? But first, we need to establish we're going to have enough room to mount our decoder. I'm thinking probably either there or there. There's a bit of a, a high spot there, so it'd be better if it was lower down rather than coming up even further. Let's check that against what we've got here. Hmm. Not a huge amount of room. Difficult to tell till the shell's on. I actually think we've got more height than I was expecting. I might even try one of our one of our little decoder mounts, if I can dig one out, give me a sec. So this is something else I 3D printed. You don't have to use something like this, but it it will help keep things neat and tidy and away from the, the flywheels and drive shaft, but not essential. Let's see if it can fit over there. So that clips on there nicely and ideally, the decoder would sit in here. So I'll tell you what we'll do. I don't know if we've got the height, but... 
Let's just blue tack that down for now. Try the, mo the body over the top and see if it's going to fit with the shell. Okay. I think that's going to be too high, but we'll give it a shot. Ah, I think it's too wide anyway. Yeah, see, this would work for like a PA or an F7 type local, but it's so narrow in there, it's not getting in. Oh well, it was worth a shot. Now you know, I guess we're back to doing the basics. So, while we've got the blow tack, let's make sure we've got enough room in here. Uh, let's see which way. I think we'll try it this way. I mean, you can use like double sided tape or whatever you like. On this occasion, I don't actually think I'll be using the hot glue gun because the motor could get hot and heat up the glue and then that could cause problems on its own. This is so tight in here. You know what? Let me just, let me just snip this off. It's just going to get in my way anyway. And I won't be using this. Okay, that'll work. We've got the height, so my decoder can sit up there. No problem at all. Right, wiring. I may as well plug in my harness and then stick the decoder down, since I know where it's going now. And then we can figure out how to route all the wiring. Get this off for now. It's not the tightest of fits. Ah, there it goes. Okay. So what did I say that way? Hmm. Although, I think I th would prefer it this way. I'm going to be soldering the orange wire, this one here, onto this power pickup for the motor. I think I would rather have it there than there, because that's directly over the spring and the brush. So if I meant it this way, I can always double back the wires and stick them on top of the decoder, but it means that this orange wire can get mounted to there. I think that is more desirable, to be honest. So let's get a fresh bit of blue tack, because this one's a bit grubby. I found some white tack instead. I don't have any black tack, which is the bestest, but I can't seem to find it in Canada. You can get it on Amazon, but it's like $30 for a couple of squares. It's nonsense. Anyway, this is better because it kind of molds into place. Look how dirty I've got it already. Goodness. Hope no one sees that. You are going there. Decoder can get splodged on the top. Squish that down. And remember, once the shell is over the top, it's not really going to go anywhere. It's just to stop it sliding about and misbehaving. Okay, let's get some wiring done finally. So, orange wire is the power coming from the decoder into the positive of the motor. So that's going to go to there. Let's get that cut. Right there. Strip that back. A bit of flux, a bit of tinning. Need a bit of solder for a bit of tinning, don't we? Get a bit of flux on this connection here. Get our first wire finely attached. Let's bend up a wee bit. Just, I'll just try to keep the wires as short as possible. <sighs> I 
Yay. Actually, that's the second one because we've already got this one up. Although this grey one now has to join on to the grey one coming out of the decoder, which is why I made it grey. So let's keep that nice and short. This is coming up to there. You just need to join these together. Although I do want to keep it away from the flywheel as much as possible. Okay, we're going to snip that one there. And we'll snip this one about here. Strip them back. Flux. Turn them up first before the next step. Because before I join these two, I need to slip on a bit of... This decoder does not want to stay put. Just stay there. Before I join these together, I want to get a wee bit of heat shrink tubing. Just a little bit. Slide you down there. And we can join these together. Slider heat shrink over them, make it nice and safe, get with the shrinking, lovely, okay so that is the power going to the motor, orange and grey from the decoder, next then we want to actually get the power into the decoder. We've got too many wires here. Let's get rid of the green one. We don't need that one. And uh, we don't need the brown one. We do, however, need the red one and the black one. Let's just tuck these under here for now. We don't need them at the moment. They're for the lights. God, look at them. They just want to be part of the action. So the black one's easy enough, the black one's got, just going to go straight to that. So let's do that one just now. We snip there. Bit of a strip show. Bit of flux. Bit of tinning. And it's going to there, which is the negative Pick up from the left rails. Okay, so that's our negative pickup coming from all the wheels on that side through there into the decoder. Now we have to connect the red wire to the right side of the rails, which is there and there. So this needs obviously to either split off to the two or we need to run a wire from there to there and join this on. Let me see if I can find a nice fine wire. Oh, I wonder if I could use this wire and intercept it. Because it is long enough. That would make sense. So, we'll snap that there. We'll join that red wire to there. And then we'll join a second red wire from there all the way to the back. I will completely explain what on earth I'm doing once I've done this. So, strip that back. Ah, you know the story. Rinse and repeat. Strip both of these. Usual story, as I say, flux, tinning. Ooh, that's a bit dirty. Tin you, tin you, 
to new. Going to need a bit more solder on this, so more flux. Oh goodness, that was a lot of flux. Some in the back, just to make sure we have enough. Fresh blob of solder on this one. And the back. Now we can get... Ow! That was hot. Rookie mistake. Right, red. So this is the front right rail pickup. So we've now got power from the front right going into the decoder. The rear isn't connected yet though, so we need to connect a wire from there. All the way to the back. Okay, you see what we've got now? Power from the right goes up there along the wire, joins onto the front right, so they're both connected. And then that little wire power into the decoder. Black wire, everything on the chassis is connected to the left hand wheels into the decoder. Grey wire, bottom connection of the motor. Orange wire, top connector, connection of the motor. So technically, we can put this on the track and it should work as a DCC local, even without these wires, because they're just for the lights. So, let's try that. All new decoders should come from the factory as local number three. Enter. So if I give it some power, it should go forward if I switch it to DCC. Oh, it's off. Change direction. Change direction. I was wondering what was making the noise, but I've got another DCC local on the track. Let's get him off just now, he's put me off. Much as I love it, we don't need you right now. As I was saying, forward, Work in, change direction, comes back, Let's change direction again, goes forward, power down, off. Excellent. So all that's left now is to hook up these wires to some lights. Okay, LEDs. So I currently do have LEDs installed and I did trim the wires. So the the way this works is the blue wire has to connect to the positive of the front and the rear, which is these two red wires. So I'll probably twist them together, solder them, strip that back, solder them together. So that's the common positive, the blue, going to the positive of the front and the rear. This white wire is the front negative, which will go to this black wire, which is going to the front. And the yellow one, goes to the negative of the rear, like that. That's just soldering some wires, so I'll bring you back when that's all done, because I do need to figure out how I'm going to tuck all these wires in. I don't want them fouling the flywheels, obviously. Right, I'll bring you back when that's all wired and looking lovely, hopefully. And my LEDs are wired up. I've attached the wires to the inside of the shell with copious amounts of hot glue. Makes it easier to remove if I decide I don't like them. So the only possible issue is these three wires going to the front and rear lights, making sure they don't foul the front drive shaft. I don't think they will, but what I'll try and do is tuck them back that way so that everything is kind of over this area rather than over there. Let's give it a shot, see if we've still got some room for these little wires. Make 
sure nothing else is fouling any of our drivetrain. So far, so good. Hot glue everywhere. So I think something was fouling there, but I don't see what it was. Yeah, it definitely seems to be something at the front that's not allowing it to go all the way down, which is a shame because the clips are not strong enough to keep it down there. Oh, I do have a yellow wire there. That's not helping, is it? Oh, now it's not coming off. Make up your mind. That has to go in that side. Wires are in this time. Pretty good. Pretty good. I think it was just the. Nah, there's definitely something not happy. That's so annoying. Just so tight in there. Just squash it really hard. Don't do this, by the way. This is just because it's mine. Ah, I'm sure it'll be fine. I just hope it works. Let's get to the track and find out, shall we? So I used a tiny bit more hot glue <laughs> just between there and the frame just to, you know, persuade it to stay down. It seems to be fine now. As long as it runs and I haven't just stuck the wires right across the drivetrain. Let's find out. Right, we'll start with the headlight. Do you work? Yes, you do. Very nice. All right, we'll give it some power. Nice and slowly, please, and not too much noise. There might be a bit of noise because of the new gears, but that will take a while to wear them down. That's not bad at all. Make sure reverse works and the light should come on. Very bright. Change direction again. Lovely. Okay, let's go for a victory lap. Definitely hearing a little bit of gear noise, but as I say, that should wear down. Another old loco joins the DCC club. Should have done that one ages ago. Hope that was helpful. Quite a long video, but I'm trying to be as detailed as possible, especially if you've never done a DCC upgrade before. 
It's really not that hard. It is harder on an atherm or anything that needs you to isolate the motor. I should really try it on an older pancake motor because they've just got two wires going to the motor. That's it. So maybe do that. I do have a, a worthy candidate on the shelf over there. Maybe do that next. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I would need to go now and grind some gears. Oh, the hardship of playing with my trains. Trains? Trains. That was a cross between a tram and a train. Tram. Anyway, I've obviously gone mad. See you soon. Bye for now.